Good afternoon. I'm Jonathan Kraft. And I'm Sarah Cummings. Thanks for joining us on Studio B. This year marked the second annual Technology Fair at Wichita State. Austin Cliff was at the fair and has more from the newsroom. Austin? Good afternoon, Jonathan and Sarah. Now this year's Technology Fair, I'm told, was an even greater success than last year's. Now, I had a chance to sit down with some of the vendors at this year's fair and find out what kind of technologies Wichita State has to offer. There's a lot of booths this year. This is our second year of doing it. Uh, and uh, we have uh, pretty much groups from all over campus that like to demonstrate the type of technologies that, that is available to uh, different users here on campus. Elliott School of Communications Director of Technology Kevin Kepler had the opportunity to show off some of the features offered with Mac products available for students and faculty in Elliott Hall and a few other locations across campus. Uh, one of the things that I'm showing off is uh, wirelessly presenting uh, different screens uh, up to a display like you see here behind me uh, so that I can take a, an iPhone, an iPad, or even a desktop computer and wirelessly mirror that screen uh, to, a, to a television set. Dr. Mark Percaro hosted a booth sharing an opportunity only offered at 28 other universities across the nation. Wichita State began working with Educause and Internet2 to provide free, completely digital textbooks for almost 800 students this semester. There is definitely a green aspect to it in that there's, you know, it's not a paper copy. Um, there's less lugging around in your backpack, you know, having a backpack that weighs 50 pounds, it's, you can have it on one computer. Porcaro says that this fair could help the university figure out where to go next with the e-books. Still trying to decide how the technology is going to be used here in the future, and the students here at Wichita State are helping to shape that technology. Becky North of University Computing summed up the true purpose for having the fair and why Wichita State plans to continue it annually. Our theme is to show people what is available here at WSU today, technology-wise. So we're just showing all kinds of different um, hardware, software, how can students, faculty and staff use technology at Wichita State. Now students, faculty and staff attending the fair said they were excited to find out all of the technology they have at their disposal here at the university and they look forward to new developments at next year's fair. Now, I'm live in the newsroom, Austin Clift. Back to you in the studio. Construction continues on the Radican Student Center, but with new technology, everyone can watch the progress from their computer screens. Thanks to the IT department and the RSD and director David Kidd. Anyone interested in the progress of the Radican can follow it live online. Kidd says the idea started in 2004 with the first revamp of the Student Center, but newer technology has allowed for 24-hour streaming. But with a project this big, um, it's really kind of hard to cover like inside the building. So we started looking outside and uh, found, a, uh, found a camera that works for us. You can stay up to date with the renewal by logging on to the live cam at wichita.edu slash rsc. From the cowboy hats to the endless sea of denim, the arena was packed with screaming fans of country. It was tough finding an empty seat for the concert at Wichita State's Charles Koch Arena last Saturday night. From everybody I heard, everybody had a great time. We had a great turnout. Uh, people were loud. People were having fun. You can see everybody was having a good time. Country artists Joe Nichols and James Otto helped kick off the centennial birthday of the Wichita State Student Government Association with the premiere of Shocker Appreciation Concert. I was told at one point Joe Nichols um, was leaving and they actually got him to stay on for a couple more songs so just by cheering and being loud so that's you know that doesn't say that, that it, was, it was a good show then I don't know what does. To help celebrate its 100 years of service to the students, SGA offered free tickets to the first 3,000 students to the concert. But my favorite was James Otto when he sang about his little girl, who's two now. Thanks everybody for the support that we had for the concert. Again, it was a great turnout, much much better than a lot of people um, thought and expected, and we just have the students in the community to thank for that. This concert is part of the ongoing series of events at Wichita State celebrating the centennial of Wichita State's SGA. Though Tuesday started out rainy and windy, the Student Activity Council didn't let the weather stop them from hosting the final meal with the finalists. Donuts and coffee were served on the lawn in front of the Heskett Center as students mingled with the four men and four women up for the Man and Woman of the Year Award.
President Bardo even made an appearance to congratulate the finalist as well as make himself available for any questions. The Man and Woman of the Year Award is similar to someone receiving the honor of homecoming king or queen. And showcase how well, how involved they are, how well they do the school, how much influence they have on campus. Winners will be announced at a banquet held this Saturday and each will receive a scholarship. Faculty join a panel discussion on gender issues Tuesday at lunchtime. Five panelists talked about challenges they face as female faculty members. Adeline Tan has a story. In higher education institutions, women often presume some administrative roles related to caregiving. Associate Provost Linnea Glenmire reveals that only 24% of full professors across the country are women. The panel addresses how the work culture at Wichita State influenced their teaching, research, and other service experiences. My son came home, I was teaching in overload, and I was also serving um, as undergraduate coordinator. Um, so I really was pretty stretched thinly at a time when I needed to devote my resources to my son. Emotion and work-life balance are two main challenges faced by female faculty members at the university. Of the 14 attendees, only three are male faculty members. How would the men respond to the gender issues brought up at the panel discussion? been aware of these issues for a long time. What this panel did for me was to remind me of, of just how important these issues are and how persistent they are, even though there are very many people uh, with goodwill who are trying to do the right thing. Nevertheless, there are systematic and structural issues that, that uh, sometimes get in the way. Reporting for Studio B, this is Adeline Tian. The panel discussion offers a platform for faculty to share their experiences and concerns of gen issues with the community. Wichita State President John Bardo has a vision of Wichita State to accommodate 20,000 and more students for the near future. Exactly how far away are we from that vision? In the last eight years, the average enrollment was between 14,000 to 15,000 students. Last fall of 2011, students enrolled for classes exceeded that average with a little over 15,000. Headcount at Wichita State this fall is about 15,000 students, a decrease of 1.3 point, or one. 3.0%, excuse me, compared to last fall, according to the official enrollment report given to the Kansas Board of Regents following the 20th day of classes. It is the second highest drop enrollment in the last 10 years. Although enrollment is slightly lower, students are taking more classes, resulting in a number of credits in Wichita State's history. Shocker Softballs hosted Seminole State for their first exhibition game on the year on Tuesday evening. The fifth inning, Shockers down 4-3. But this would only be temporary as sophomore Megan McCracken comes to the plate. With a runner on second, McCracken with the big bat puts the Shocks in scoring position. Next up to the plate, it's senior Haley Temple. And she flies out to center, but not before the RBI. Senior Katie Armagos crossing the plate with a tying run. Game now tied at 4-all. But wait, there's even more in this inning. McCracken still on second, going for the steal. This ball is overthrown, and that will bring her in for the lead. Shocks will hold on to this one through two more innings to win it 5-4. It looks like the Lady Shockers are off to another great season. Rowing comes easy to the teammates, but as for non-rowers, that's a different story. Wichita State's rowing team annually gives their family and friends a shot at rowing at the fifth annual class race family fun row. The class race means that within the rowing team, each grade level forms a team and races against the others. The junior rowers took home the win this year, leaving the seniors behind in second place. We want to have fun, we want to enjoy it, but at the, at the end of the day, they, they're on a competitive team because they like to compete. And it doesn't matter what we do, they don't like to lose. And that's part of what I like, that's part of the culture we want to cultivate here and so are they gonna go home and fume about it no but but they're also not happy if they lose and and that's how you get better is you have to want to win the river is quiet right now the rowing team brought along their family and friends to showcase their skills and for some it was their first time rowing just getting to experience like seeing what it's like for them to row because um, I can tell them all day what it's like but until they actually go out and do it they don't know 
Yes. Yeah. Now, Keatley's sister got a chance to row with her brother, his girlfriend, their sister, and their mom all together in a family boat. Yes, this is my first time rowing. Um, I watched the Olympics last summer and I was like, man, those guys got coordination to go together and I'm the most, I, I can't do it. I'm so rhythmically challenged. I'm like, try and play the drums together and I'm totally off beat. So uh, it was a crazy experience to try that. Like other first timers participating in rowing, Shelby Keatley now understands a little bit of what her brother and the rest of the rowing team does. Mm. It's actually really fun to do like yeah. besides the hard work it's really fun to just row yeah it's a lot of fun a lot of technique too more than I thought it would be like I thought it would just be oh you're pulling all through the water this is gonna be easy but it's a lot more work than I thought but it's still really fun their last race is the Frostbite race on November 4th, featuring 35 teams from 11 different states equaling to about 500 athletes for Elliott School students, Calm Week brings about a chance to learn from prof professionals in their field. After the break, we'll find out more about this WSU tra tradition. The Elliott School of Communications Calm Week is an annual fall tradition of more than 20 years. The idea of Calm Week is to have students engage in a concentrated period of great speakers on communication topics. The Calm Week committee wants to steer students to the real world. They start prepping six months prior to the event. Of local and national speakers that will touch on a lot of different elements of communication. To come and to listen to professionals in the field and to talk to other students and process what goes on here and then interact with your faculty in the context of these professional discussions, I just call it pre-professional or anticipatory socialization. Couldn't be better. The idea of Calm Week is to have students Excuse me. The event offers free pizza and other snacks to the students that attend this event. Communication has an additional, additional two days off of fall break due to Calm Week. Donna, tell us more about this. Most communications professors <laughs> do not have classes as they encourage their students to attend Calm Week sessions instead. It's designed for something for our students to help them network and have experiences and learn things that they might not in the classroom. They might have to sign in or they might have to write a little one-page reaction paper, which is what my students have to do. Whether students attend with an incentive or not, what they get at a calm week is not only food, but perhaps something new. Uh, the thing that I learned that was at least most interesting to me was hearing the personal stories that they had to share. Uh, they weren't just facts, they were you know, more, a little more of an intimate story. You kind of got a feel for who the people were. I attended the radio show also and it was interesting to see how just a three-man crew could work so well together. Just three guys with a computer and mics set up and it was pretty interesting how they did it. <laughs> this is homework. <laughs> Even though students had an additional two days of fall break, the Elliott building was still busy with students roaming. This is Donna reporting for Studio B. This year's Calm Week invited speakers such as previous ABC anchor and Wichita State alum Jeremy Hubbard and other and local and national speakers. Volunteers stand side by side to pass the food and load the Kansas Food Bank truck. People form a lifeline to move food collected from the campus-wide food drive from the Elliott Hall to a truck. The lifeline idea is inspired by the new MANA food packaging event and previous food drive. Your hands on this food that other people are going to eat. It really gives you an empowering feeling, and you, you get to, that you've touched food that someone else is going to eat that night, and it feels great to know that you're actually part of the solution. The next plan of the campaign is to raise money for an on campus food pantry to help reduce hunger at Wichita State. Because it well, it brings you, makes you aware that people do go hungry, and it gives you a sense of accomplishment to at least help with the problem of hunger. How many were filled? Five. 
After the break, we will have a guest from the Student Wellness Action Team to tell us about the upcoming volleyball event. Stay tuned. Today is Je with us is Jesse Briscoe, president of SWAT. Welcome. Hi. Um, can you please tell us what exactly does SWAT? Uh, SWAT is the Student Wellness Action Team. Um, we're a brand new student organization, just started last month actually, we just got approved. Um, we're here to promote the health and wellness of the students right here at Wichita State University. Okay, um, and can you tell us what the event is going on this Saturday that deals with this big yeah, ball here? Yeah, for sure. Um, what you see here, this is a four foot wide hot pink volleyball. Um, what we are putting on is the big pink volleyball tournament. And what that is, um, you can form a team between four to ten participants. All we're asking is five dollars per person, and all the proceeds are going to Susan G. Coleman. This is a breast cancer awareness um, charity event. We're super excited because this is our first event that we're putting on um, this school year, and we'll see how it goes. We're pretty excited about it, though. Yeah, yeah so am I. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the rules that's going to be going on with this? I mean, yeah. is it any different than normal volleyball? Yeah, each game will be a 15-minute game um, because it is single elimination. Um, right now we have 14 teams okay. that have actually registered so far, but the deadline to register is this Friday at 5 o'clock. Um, but each game will be 15 minutes. There will be door prizes throughout the event. The winning team as well as the best dressed team will both get prizes um, during the event. And so we've got a lot of donations from a lot of businesses around, the around Wichita that have contributed to help allow for those prizes to happen. Okay. Um, and w what time is it again on Saturday? The tournament begins at 11 o'clock in the morning. A uh, captain's meeting will be at 10 a.m. Um, for anyone, we just need one member for each team to be there just to kind of go over the rules and know when each team is going to be playing, um, that kind of thing. And so we will start right at 11 o'clock. Each game will be 15 minutes. Um, as far as how long this will last, that will really be determined on uh, how many teams register before Friday at 5 o'clock. Okay, and is this event just open to just WSU students or faculty members? Uh, or Anybody, anybody. Um, students, faculty, staff, if you have family members, if you have friends that go to another school, if you have friends in the community, we, we're not going to limit ourselves. Anybody can participate in this event. Okay. Um, and can you tell us a little bit what the door prizes are going to entail? Or is this... Um, so far there will be t-shirts. Um, we've got a number of uh, coupons, or um, sorry, gift certificates, not coupons, gift certificates to a lot of the restaurants in the area. And so I, I won't give the, the names of the organizations. You'll have to come Saturday to, to find that out, but yeah. Okay. Um, and where can um, people and students come and get the registration forms? Um, yeah, the registration forms, they're all available at Campus Recreation, Student Health Services, Counseling and Testing, and at each of the three residence halls right here on campus at Wheat Shocker Apartments, Fairmount Towers, and Brennan Hall. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you like to mention or try to get people involved? Or Yeah, I mean, if, if anyone is interested in joining the Student Wellness Action Team, we meet on Mondays at 3.30. Um, over at Student Health Services in Alberg Hall, room 209. And again, we would love to have you. Um, we're here to promote the health and wellness of the students right here at Wichita State. And in moving forward after this event, um, we have some pretty creative ideas. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, um, we would like to collaborate and partner with some other similar organizations. And so if you're even in another organization that's health related, come to the meeting Monday or get in contact with me, and we would love to have you. Okay. All right. Everyone, this, uh, the event is this Saturday. Um, if you like, just come pick up a program like Jesse mentioned. And uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. We'll be back after the break. Another fall break has come and go, but some students spent their time flying while others are getting ready to bring home a bundle of joy. Check it out. She took me flying on Monday. She's a pilot. And uh, she let me fly too. She said I was good. I wanted to cry, I don't know why. I felt like I was in the movie, Red Tails, but um, I don't know. I was out of words. I was like, I can't believe this is happening. My family, we get to spend some time with each other because uh, my siblings, they all involve in sports and different stuff, so we don't have time to spend much time together, but we had the chance, plus I work. I just pretty much relax, just kinda, it had been a few, stressful weeks before fall break so I just relaxed. I didn't, do, I didn't do homework or anything. I just kind of was relaxed with my family and stuff. I took advantage of the time for other things. I didn't do anything school related. I have a baby that's due in a month so we took advantage of that time to get everything ready at home. I uh, got the baby's room set up and the crib built and uh, 
re reorganized the house to get ready for the baby. That's what we did. Fall break, it fell on Tech Week for the opera because we were both on the opera. Mm -hmm. So we rehearsed probably four or five hours every day. And then on my free time, well, we did a lot of the same stuff together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we went to a couple parties, I think, and did a little bit of homework. Made a fort. <laughs> Made a fort, yes. <laughs> Students are anticipating the next upcoming break. Well, that wraps up for this week's Studio B. Be sure to join us next week. Have a great day.